Rebecca Martin, and I'm the organizer of the Chicago Film Lover Exchange. Today we're talking about Alfonso Cuaron's Children of Men, and I'll let our group introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Jeff Breitman. Hello, I'm Al Kukuski. Hello, I'm Becca Covey. Hi, I'm Kate Rakow. Children of Men is an amazing film, and there's just so much to talk about, so I will let our group say their first impressions of the film. Well, I, I was blown away by the film the first time I saw it. I thought it was uh, a remarkable piece of filmmaking, but what has come to, what I've come to appreciate watching it over uh, and over again, I think I've seen it about five times now, is the technical artistry that I didn't really pay attention to the first time I watched it because I was just so involved in the, the storyline mm -hmm. and the plot and following this near future dystopia and mm -hmm. everything that happens to the characters in it. But watching it multiple times I am aware of the artistry and technical skill that is almost seamless. It's so mm -hmm. uh, well executed. And it's really just a testament to the, the artistry of Cuaron and his team and the combination of special effects and cinematography. Yeah. I, I, I'm thrilled every time I watch it, even though I know exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. right. That was my first impression. Yeah, I think maybe not my first impression because I kind of agree with everything you said. Like sure. The first time before I'm watching, I'm watching the story, very involved, wanting to find out what's going to happen. Um, but up, you know, upon subsequent viewings, like uh -huh. you notice all these little, like kind of like little Easter eggs maybe that you didn't see before. Or I, I've really come to appreciate the long shot and the way he uh -huh. filmed it, and like little quick things that you see that's like there one second and gone the next. So I think that it's a film that can be enjoyed, enjoy, <laughs> enjoyed upon initial viewing, but. Um, also, the more you watch it, the, the more that I saw. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one it's one of my favorite movies, and like you said, the the technical aspect of it is really great. It's uh, with with the effects and and some of the camera work. It's it's so seamless, and it's the best kind of effects because you don't even realize that they're effects. They're just there. Mm -hmm. They're so believable that you just get completely. Uh, absorbed uh -huh. in the, the film and it's just a great and on the whole the film is just a great example of how like science fiction can be such a great genre for, uh -huh. for storytelling and for uh, making comments about society and where you think people are going so it just it kind of just takes all of that stuff and just becomes just a great not just a great sci-fi movie but a great movie See, I want to talk about that. Like, I didn't take it to be a sci-fi movie, but it is. It is a sci-fi movie. What was this, what was the sci-fi? We're in the Aspect future. We're seeing where where we're headed. Um, it's something that scientifically isn't happening now, but but mm. could be happening. Um, I think to me, for it to be more of a sci-fi movie, they would have focused more on the infertil infertility and not made it like. You know, See, this the thing is, is there's two very distinct but... types of science fiction. Not two, diff not two types, but two main types of science fiction are the more sciencey science fiction and then the more fictiony science fiction. Mm -hmm. And the the thing that I always bring up is Jules Verne versus H. G. Wells. Jules Verne wrote really hard science fiction. Mm -hmm. It was all about the technology, mm -hmm. the submarines, the hot air balloons going to the moon. Whereas H. G. Wells was writing political and social commentary and using the what if factor mm -hmm. of sci-fi to kind of show mm -hmm. um, what he felt about now because in order to be thinking about the future you have to be thinking about what's happening now right mm -hmm. and what Alan? oh I'm just on what Katie was saying the uh, the best science fiction movies I found are like true stories <laughs> like mm -hmm. I find them true stories mm -hmm. I like they they go and they use scientific ideas like just how of like the technology and communication and, and infertility and in children of men and they use it to just echo and reflect upon how the world, how the world really yeah. is today. In that way, that's one of the most, most amazing things about Children of Men. I, I really find it like this millennium's answer to Blade Runner. Because Blade Runner is about how technology and culture overwhelms the world. In, and, it's, and it was made in a, 
era where like America was really wondering about like all the diff- all these different cultures and them finding their place in it. In the same way, this it, uh, Children has a really fascinating message upon like what's about what people's hopes for the future are and what where they where they can be where they can tie it mm-hmm. uh, where they can attach it to. So I I still question it because. For one, I read a quote by the director that said if we had wanted to make a more science fiction movie, we would have focused more on the infertility and, and the technology mm-hmm. of that. Secondly, I think this movie acts as more of a vessel like to describe the present world. Like I think everything we see with immigration and war and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know all that stuff, I think is very familiar. And I, and I think that he's just kind of saying like this is where what is happening now could be going. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, yeah, like it's open to interpretation and mm-hmm. I'm not kind of like disagreeing it that I'm not saying no is definitely not a sci-fi film because yeah, I agree. But I think that the motivation behind it was not necessarily like mm-hmm. to showcase futuristic mm-hmm. setting. And right, no, definitely. Yeah. I, I would yeah. say that, that yeah. one, one aspect of sci-fi is talking about the the present moment mm-hmm. through this metaphor of right. the near future. <laughs> and um, I think also it doesn't really matter if it fits mm-hmm. neatly into mm-hmm. a category or a box. Right. Just as a cinematic experience, mm-hmm. it has elements of sci-fi, it has elements of a war movie, it has elements yeah. of a yes. thriller, it has elements of like a spy film. There right. are noir mm-hmm. aspects yeah. to it. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it's just a phenomenal movie, right. regardless right. of what genre it gets pigeonholed yeah. into. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I feel like the film, uh, it's, it's focused right on the infertility idea, like life, and, and that goes along with um, Kate's question she sent about um, infertility as a metaphor, mm-hmm. uh, and I think that's something worth talking about, and we, you kind of were touching on that. Um, so, any thoughts? I mean, the infertility is infertility, like the whole environment thing, is is, is a. I mean, it's something that, like, as a biological level, where people don't, where pe- it people don't think about the biological processes on a scientific sense, but yet it's something that affects everybody mm-hmm. every every day. Yeah. And um and the infertility, I think, used in this movie is as as a way of just it's the future. Mm-hmm. It's the idea of that this culture has lost this sense of. Mm-hmm anything to look forward to. Right. Uh, another big thing that I wanted to mention is that I think um, one of the main themes of the film is uh, chance. Chance? Yeah, yeah just, mm. just random, ev- like chaos, just random events occurring. Mm-hmm. For ex- Jasper talks about Yeah, yeah, Jasper mm-hmm. talks about it in that, uh, that scene where he's overhearing um, him describe to Key and Miriam about uh, Theo and Julian, and yeah. then their son. Mm-hmm. And I think um, it's very conscious and uh, specific that Theo and Julian had a child together that they lost, so that they had that, not technically infertility, but that experience of having a child and then losing it that is now mm-hmm. a worldwide mm-hmm. phenomenon. So they're this mm-hmm. kind of like microcosm of what's right. happening in all of society. The infertility thing is. Not, is um is just like this theme of hopelessness. When you have no children or no ability to produce children, you have no future. Um, and quite I mean, literally, yeah. Quite literally, no future. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really scary. And people, like the idea of not being able to do what you were, a lot, uh, you were born to do. I mean, some people don't necessarily feel mm-hmm. that now, but we are supposed to make children. And when we can't do that, it's, um, and when it's out of your control, mm-hmm. like the loss of control. Uh-huh. Um, and. There, uh, also, there, there's a lot of people like want to tie in environmentalism with the infertility and uh, the way like the climate's going. That's something that feels like it's out of our control. Mm-hmm. Um, that is is also scary. Yeah, and something I wanted to add is I really feel like this is a very personal film, like about people. Like mm-hmm. the environment around them is important. But something I noticed about Theo is that um, he started changing. Like after Julian got shot, and then he found out that he was pregnant, it's like he realized the mission that Julian was trying to do, mm-hmm. and he took over that mission because he he loves or loved Julian mm-hmm. so much, and then he stepped in, and it, it was just like people, like it's like mm-hmm. 
Julian dies, and then he finds out Keith's pregnant, and then it becomes his mission, and then everything from there on, the mm -hmm. people that come into his life, like um, there's Miriam, and then uh, Marika when they're in the prison. Sid. Sid, mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, all mm -hmm. the people that are in his life mm -hmm. during that mission, right. um, that's what's important, like the, the people. And yeah, the it's, it very much looks at like how, how they have the different approaches to this, this untenable situation. Mm -hmm. Like how, if, if you have this sense that like you don't know what the future uh, will, will bring you, how do you approach it? And right. Actually, yeah. I think a really great counterpoint to what, um, uh, to what Theo does is, is Miriam. There is a wonderful scene where she's practicing yeah. Tai Chi right out the window, and, <laughs> yeah. and the people in this really warm household are looking out there, and and uh, and they ask, well, is she is she acting goofy or is she acting? Is she like, doing her hoodoo voodoo? Hoodoo voodoo, right? <laughs> and it's like and, and, and asking for Theo's opinion. And Theo's response is, she's earnest. Yeah. Like Miriam is a Miriam is a believer. Yeah. What does she believe in? Anything that you can, like in fact, like there's a moment where um, Michael Caine's character uh, points out, like that he says he's seen a UFO, and she's like, "Really? There are UFOs?" It's like, yeah, uh -huh. she, like like the X Files. She, want, she, she wants, wants to, to believe. believe. Yeah, I found yeah. there's something wonderfully charming well, how we're trying the Tai Chi and not quite getting it, but like then that. keeping going. Yeah. I yes. think that um, kind of just going back a, a bit to um, Theo's character, I don't see him changing like oh he discovers a mission and I think that you know he changes into this new person I think it's always there I think a signal to me that he's ultimately a good person is that when they arrive at the farm mm -hmm. um, the dogs come up to him mm -hmm. and one of the guys the Thomas the farmer says oh they like you and they don't like anyone yeah and then Which later actually, on actually when they're yeah when there, they're running away oh okay but the when they're um, when they're kind of running away from the farm and the dogs are chasing them and the dogs actually don't do anything so I was like mm -hmm. oh that helped, that helped them out mm -hmm. there um, I, I think that he's always kind of been a good person and then it goes back to um, how he met Julian and they were in this um, uh, activist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, they I, I, just, protest. I just think, yeah, in the protest. And I just think that maybe it's been buried because they had this grief of losing the child and ultimately mm -hmm. they were separated. Then he's obviously like an alcoholic. I think he's just buried the, these feelings and then suddenly. You know, Key comes along and she's pregnant, and there's some hope again. Right. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, like, I think Clive Owen played the it very well. Like, he's, I, I mean, I kind of took personally, like, I could identify with his almost like British sensibilities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it felt very, like, you know, British. Um, the way he kind of plays it, uh, his attitude to things happening around him. Mm -hmm go to work, wake up, everyday shit, like, you know, got a hangover all the time, um, but then suddenly, like, there's this kind of, like, little spark of hope, this thing that's buried in him kind of comes alive a little bit again, and it's kind of just an attitude of soldiering on, like, this is, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. get through it. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. even before he finds out about Key being pregnant, and when Julian's still alive, um, he just says, oh, no, it's not, it's too dangerous. I'm not going to talk to my cousin Nigel about mm -hmm. getting the pass. Like, yeah. he seemed like, I'm done. But then he goes, the next scene is him going to visit his cousin Nigel to ask mm -hmm. for the, mm -hmm. the papers or whatever. So I thought that was interesting how he started, like, you know, mm -hmm. making it his mission mm -hmm. as well. So yeah. there, There is a real poetry that this movie has in, in I think, a spiritual sense to it. And I think, mm -hmm. I think the moment where there's a final spark where he decides that what he should do is help Key finish the mission and not just use it to save his own skin, and it's when she finally reveals herself. It's just mm -hmm. this collection of, of these different imagery. Like, the first, the way she holds herself is like this really famous painting of... of of, uh, of Venus or Aphrodite mm -hmm. sitting on the clamshell. Sure. Yeah. And she's also in a manger. Yes, she's also right in a manger, but then also in the background are all these pipes and processing. And she, mm -hmm. before she reveals herself, she says, "Why do they always have four? Why do they have four machines for each? Four machines? Uh, a machine for no, four?" She's, she's talking about how they the machine has four right. pumps, mm -hmm. right. so they cut off. For a, yes. as a cow's tits, yes. but why not make a machine with eight pumps? Right, and the answer is that that's 
what technology is all about. That's right. progress. It, I think that's a very it, apt metaphor. Exactly. It's beautiful how it just goes and says, like, asks the question, like, is are we serving technology or or, or is technology built to go and serve our needs, you know? I never even thought, like, I never even, like, made the connection that she's in a barn in a manger. This right. This pregnant vessel of hope. Like, uh -huh. that's very, I never even made that connection. It's just like, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just yeah. going to kind of talk about Key's character a bit more and, I say, yeah. and, and say that I think um, she kind of stripped it of any... It was very rough, like it wasn't very sentimental, like she was telling it like it is, and that's kind of the whole theme of the movie, mm -hmm. or you know, the attitude to the whole movie. Mm -hmm. and, um, they even play off of that when he asks her who the father is. She says, "Oh, don't yeah. you know I'm a virgin?" And then laughs. Yeah. And, you know, like she, they, they make fun of that yes. cliche yeah. of the the you know pious yeah. innocent. Yeah. yeah, she's kind of she's a. Yeah. She's a rough character. She's kind of like a product of her environment and the times that they're living in. Like, mm -hmm. I see it as that, and I think it became more believable because they didn't try and make mm -hmm. her and Theo into, like, a love story mm -hmm. or, yeah. you know, try and make it something that, kind of like a lovely Hollywood ending. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that aspect of it, that it kept uh -huh. her very rough and raw, and she was like, you know, I don't know who the father is, mm -hmm. like, oh, the little bass is kicking kind of thing, and I love that. And But yeah. then when the baby came... It was like, you know, it was just instincts. Like, she was keeping her clothes. She got right. very frantic when mm -hmm. somebody, you know, the um, gypsy lady took the baby. And I loved seeing that, that she was ultimately, like, true to the environment, but then that maternal instinct was mm -hmm. just that. Mm -hmm. of right. Yeah. But she just kicked in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I think is, is hopeful. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't ask for a better, like, you know, mother of a new nation, I guess. It's like yeah. someone who, yeah. like, <laughs> someone who is, like, of that world, but still would just go have a, such a practicality and a straightforwardness in dealing yeah. with it. Right. And uh, I think one of my, my favorite moments on her, of her practicality was when there's a really dramatic moment near the end of the movie and uh, Clyde Owen's character asks if she's, uh, if she's all right, if she's all right and if the child is all right. Just, she, and she, her reply is annoyed. She's yeah. annoyed. She's annoyed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, something I, I think we should explore is, um, I don't know if this is jumping to another topic too much, but Michael, Kane, and Jasper, because we're talking so much about Key, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I think we should talk about Jasper, because for me, he was just like, it's kind of like a break, like, like Children mm -hmm. of Men is just, it's kind of a stressful movie, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> like you, you get in the stress with them, and that yeah. goes along with the, the long takes where you see all the environment that they're going mm -hmm. through and people being killed around them and mm -hmm. insane, but then it's just like, then you're in Jasper's home, where it's yeah. so intimate and comfortable, mm -hmm. and you just feel like you can breathe. Yeah. <laughs> it's just take take a break from the, the craziness and mm, calm um, down, take a hit. Just <laughs> exactly. The the cough, the yeah. strawberry yeah. cough. Well he's yeah. he's an old hippie and he, yeah. you know, you know, he, he had a past as a political cartoonist. They yeah. show his past work. His mm -hmm. his wife was a uh, war photographer yeah, I, who, if you follow the background kind of plot details, she was tortured by MI5 and mm -hmm. is now kind of comatose in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Which, um, to jump to another subject, mm -hmm. I love the way that they would pan across all the photographs. They yes. did it at least yeah. twice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I thought it was a very successful way to get that background quickly. Mm -hmm. right. Incredibly like, well done. Very right, right, all, right, all, yeah. those, right, all the plot points that you were mentioning, that's yeah. all informed by a, like a, a, series, a series of, of pans. And, and, and you get the yeah. sense of the figures and the, and the newspaper and yeah, the whole story. It's really, yeah. really it's well a, done. It's a really like well done like example of yeah, yeah. Story and, and family yes. history, because if you think about it, when um, Key was in that, when she was in the prison, and then she was in that old, the, old house, lady, the little the house, the Russian. Haven. they did yeah. the same thing. Yeah. They panned mm -hmm. and saw mm -hmm. the history of this couple that was there, mm -hmm. um, and then you saw the young face, and then you saw the old lady. Mm -hmm. And it was just like... And he also used yeah. photographs when um, they arrived at the farm and Theo was in the bathroom and it kind of zoomed in on a couple of photographs oh, of like right. a family on the swing. Mm -hmm. So that's at least three times they kind of used that method, which I thought was yeah. you know, a very successful mm -hmm. way to show 
the past. And it's a like, very it's street. a it's another thing where it really shares a kinship with Blade Runner because Blade mm -hmm. Runner has mm -hmm. the the replicants in Blade Runner right. constantly keep photographs, mm -hmm. and it ties into in the infertility thing. Mm -hmm. What can you do to go and what you can do to pass your history and your legacy yeah. through it? And mm -hmm. and children is one way, yeah. and information well, and stories are another. It, Art. Children in art. Yes. To quote right. Well, that's a lot of um, something that people are, are looking for is, you know, how to be immortal. Immortality uh -huh. is something that people are searching for in a lot of, like, literature and, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and stuff. And, and people talk about how, you know, Im immortality isn't necessarily living forever. It's uh, keeping yourself, mm -hmm. like, uh -huh. continuing, which it can be... You know your legacy of, of leaving art, leaving writing, um, and for a lot of people that's children, mm -hmm. which is another reason why the infertility hits home. Because if mm -hmm. we can't uh, make ourselves immortal through our children, then there's no mm -hmm. hope for it. Mm -hmm. Right, and and I I feel like um, a lot of the people who are in Britain were really distracted by focusing on the youngest, mm -hmm. the youngest kid. Yes, because they saw a youth kind of disappearing yeah. mm -hmm. and I instead of like doing something constructive mm -hmm. about finding a cure or you know they were just so focused on who was young mm -hmm. and 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 then the old people they can off themselves on that um pill. yeah so and it, it just mm -hmm. was horrible so the human project is like the one thing that's supposedly mm -hmm. constructive to mm -hmm. save instead the of world. instead of who was the last person that was born, right. who is the next person that will be born? Right. right. Like, mm -hmm. There's right. a character goes and says somewhere in the movie, "Is the human project real?" Mm -hmm. To which I would reply, "That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> is there a, is there a plan for what humans do?" And right. as to what as to how you how you're describing that, Rebecca, that's that's so exactly true to how like science fiction can go and like really inform the society we have today so much like which youth is so emphasized and mm -hmm. and and people with an old people of an older age are like continually trying to re you know continually try to present themselves as younger and if if they can't do it they're kind of like let's just shunt them as let's just shunt mm -hmm. them aside and let's get and that's actually one of the most, I think, most brilliant, like, little details they do is mm -hmm. the most delightful pharmaceutical commercial you could ever yes. imagine. Yes. Yeah. It's constantly seen in the background. The one for quietus. For quietus, that's yeah. right. It's so, it's the most colorful <laughs> thing in the world for a lot of tastes until you get to Michael Caine's place, right? Yeah. These pleasant colors, yeah. the wonderful music as you, as the guy disappears. Die. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right, exactly. Quietus. Yeah. What the name implies, like, so just shut the hell up and go away. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and the, it references Hamlet's soliloquy as well. Oh, really? How so? Well, uh, uh, can his quietus make with a bear bobkin? He's talking about suicide, and quietus is the word he uses yeah. to, end his, to, to mm -hmm. talk about ending your life. Oh, way cool. Um, um, and then also there's, there's that aspect of the whole... Um, the, the tagline for the ad is, it's your life, it's your choice. Mm -hmm. So it comes back to this kind of theme about choice and, and yeah. when, when there's no future, the mm -hmm. only choice you have left is when you end your life, right. I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of is, it's incredibly dark to think that it would be... Either wait and let everybody slowly die or take it into your own hands. Right. And, and that to, it's and not have to witness the end of humanity. And that it's it's something that the government's providing to its citizenry. The kind of aspect of um the whole propaganda about illegal immigrants uh -huh. and mm -hmm. how um, you, you hear these voiceovers, whether it's in Bexhill, mm -hmm. Bexhall, Bexhill, Bexhill, Bexhill. Thank you. Um, or uh, on on a bus where you know it's like a public service announcement. He's my waiter. Yeah. She cleans yeah. my house. No, these are illegal mm -hmm. immigrants. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. one, and it's like it's illegal to feed, shelter, clothes, or something like that. Like mm -hmm. to feed illegal yeah. immigrants. Yeah. It's like really right. kind of reminds me of anti-terrorism. Definitely, because you know, the the message that the, the don't leave your bag. Alone. Well, the message yeah. that the immigrants <laughs> get is this recording yeah, that says Britain provides you shelter. <laughs> yeah. Please do not. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, support terrorists. See, I, I want 
kind of talk about that a bit because I obviously the film I, I think has two common themes and that's or two major themes and that's infertility and then the immigration and I think that immigration is kind of like in the foreground of like mm -hmm. you know say the general public what they're kind of involved with or at least the Fugees like everyday life is about the immigration right. and mm -hmm. you know not being able to come into England or having issues when they get there mm -hmm. and the infertility thing aside from um, the youngest person being murdered and then then being engrossed in the TV and the news about it. Right. It's kind of like in the background a bit and it's kind of like not really talked about so much apart from that one incident and I, I think it's just interesting to, to think about how they're so caught up in the everyday stuff but then the major issue is kind of looming and it's not really being solved, almost right. like a cancer. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, <laughs> when Clive Owen shows up to his job, that's so illuminated it just like just visually because mm -hmm. the like he's walking through this hallway which is already pretty dark and the only thing that is bright is all the screens where yeah. instead of working, everyone's all mm -hmm. crying because of... Watching the, Baby Diego. Yeah. Watching right. Baby, watching baby, baby Diego. Yeah, baby. Who, who was 18, yeah. right. Right, exactly. Yeah. And like, and what then in the background, every third cubicle has a, a tarp has a tarp under it, but no one notices because everyone's all wa everyone's all watching oh, yeah. the drama on the screen without mm. seeing the calamity behind them. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And I, I love Theo's attitude. It's like, oh, oh yeah, baby, baby. That's, that's right. I don't think I could survive another day <laughs> yeah. without thinking well, about baby when, Jas <laughs> when Jasper picks, picks, yes. when Jasper picks. Um, uh, Theo up from the bus whatever stop uh, he's just like I can't take it anymore and I don't did Jasper think that he was talking about baby Diego and then he, remember he said something he's like he's like well I don't want to lose you and baby Diego, Diego at the same day. day that would be too <laughs> yeah. horrible yeah and, and they're talking about you know Jasper's like well that was the youngest wanker like, yes like, yeah <laughs> but I mean like was Theo, he was having a bad day because he was just really jaded, right? Because he's not Well, he's having a bad day because he, he nearly yeah, survived the, the went terrorist off. attack. Yeah, the also. ringing in his ears. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Which was interesting because after that bomb happened and they went, I believe, him walking to work, you still heard it. Yes. Yeah, so, I love Julian's comment about yeah, what the yeah. ear ringing is. That, that was, it's, yes. What you're hearing is your ear cells dying, and you'll never hear that frequency. It's again. the swan song. It's the last time you'll hear it, which you know it's another you know, thing that's dying that you'll never have back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it happens. It's not nice it, to think about. Right, it's not. It's yeah. not. And and it it happens it. happens dramatically at two times at two specific times in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. like one at the yes yeah. at, at the halfway point during the, when they have that magnificent tracking shot as they travel through the woods. Mm -hmm. That happens in the sustained. And then at the very end, when they're out at the apartment complex, the, mm -hmm. the ringing becomes much more prominent on the soundtrack. Because it's mm -hmm. made, you're trying to made aware of something passing right. by that won't come back. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, so what you said, uh, back about the Fugies, well, that was another really cool detail, was that this is a movie, and the script was really nice, really nicely put together. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they did in an interesting way was they're very, they're very interesting with their naming of things. One of the things that was nice was how one group is called the Fugies, the fugitives, uh -huh. but then the revolutionary group is called the Fishes. Yeah. And I mean, their names sound really similar to the extent that at one point Sid says, "Well, it's not the Fugies want to get out of this place; the Fishes want to come in." And they are similar, I think, deliberately. I think it was a take on the idea that so many of these political movements mm -hmm. are right. getting so mashed together that they don't, and not that they're not even aware of their purposes. Like earlier, there was um, a uh, mention of a group called Redeemers, and oh, then yeah. the, and, and, and then and then there was yeah. another group with an incredibly similar name. Renounce. Uh, renouncers, renouncers, that's yeah. right, renouncers, yes. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, renouncers drive like this and redeemers drive like this. I think the Fuji thing was just like their nickname to the refugees, like, mm -hmm. yeah, calling them yeah. Fugees. Um, I think that's a common nickname, actually. Yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, okay. Um, I think the fish thing was kind of interesting, but I recall when they were on the farm, the Polish guy saying his wife was a British fish. A cod. A cod, a cod yes. Uh, which kind of was interesting. I don't know whether they mean that to be true British. Or is that their group exactly? Well, I like, think because I think they're calling their group fishes or something. What I got from that is that the group, whatever the group's origins, it wasn't 
an English organization. It was yeah. like an international coalition, yeah, say, of, of refugees, refugees or, you know, perhaps Eastern mm -hmm. Europe or even Africa, and that CODs are British people who help the fishes. Oh, yeah, that mm. makes sense. Oh, I, I thought it was interesting with the long shots, like, or the, you know, the ones that were over 46 seconds. That mm -hmm. you Brilliant. Um, yeah. You really saw the, 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 the different groups, like, you know, they were all in the background, but you saw the violence going on. Mm -hmm. How they were like mm -hmm. putting bags over their heads, yes. and then it was just a pile of bodies. Like it's more like Guantanamo. <laughs> yeah, and I yes. just was like, wow, this is Abu Ghraib. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah. which had like, just broken out, which had just broken out, like like maybe a year or two before when this movie came out in two thousand six. Mm -hmm. yeah. that was my first impression upon mm -hmm. seeing the movies. Like. How did they manage to get the, this tone of just heightening the kind of feeling of paranoia mm -hmm, and right. just increased like mm -hmm. fear and this and the increased militarization on the other side, but just do it in a, such a wonderful matter of fact way. Mm -hmm, there's yeah. there's very little lecturing going on in the movie. It's it right. has, it's just telling a dramatic story, yeah. but just in the background, it, the more you can just notice yeah. and. It, and it, very layered. There's there's just so much going on, and every time you watch it, you see all the little things. Definitely. That there's the story, but then there's the stuff, the extreme foreground, the mm -hmm. right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. the, the the yeah. There's so many layers in this world of, of all these things mm -hmm. that are yeah. just going around on around mm -hmm. the main story. No, no. I, I want to talk about that some more because um, I think it's totally a conscious choice of uh, Quarons in um, going for all these multiple long takes. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I read an interview that he mm -hmm. gave um, where he talks about how um, in film, the language is about, the language of film is editing. Mm -hmm. So ed editing tells the audience where right. to look. It tells them, mm -hmm. you know, what's happening in the shot. And, you know, at the beginning of cinema, like there are all these very specific rules about editing. You had right. to have sight lines, otherwise the audience would be really confused as to what's happening. But with a long take, you don't have that sense of where is the character, what's happening now. Yeah. You yeah. can kind of absorb everything mm -hmm. that's happening right. and see yeah. all of the background details, mm -hmm. which are, I think is very, very important mm -hmm. to what he's trying yes. to do. And it yeah. makes it more immersive. It does make it immersive because when there's no cutting, it or editing, it, it just feels like real life. Like you're just watching it. It has a documentary feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of pulls you in. It's a, it makes you forget that it's a film. You just are watching right. mm -hmm. as the events unfold, and especially I, the car right. scene. You where kind you of just feel like you're even, in the car. You feel like you're in the yeah. car because... You are, basically. You are, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You are mm -hmm. looking around yeah. without, like... Right. Cuts or You're talking right. about the ping pong, um, ping pong scene. Yeah. yeah. If there is a if there is a lang if there's like a language to cinema, you know, God bless Quaron for showing you can do more than just text. Mm -hmm. You know, you, mm -hmm. there is you can have a scene should be like a matter of sec a shot should be a matter of seconds if that's what you need to do to express what you need to show in the movie. If it needs to be forty five seconds or ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, that's what Quaron's going to do for that part of the film. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I love the guy for just increasing the palette. He, gives, he, makes it, he makes it possible for people to do more things with the films that they have and yeah. not just tie it into like, the idea that people uh, have to have a quick cutting style yeah. in order yeah. to like, keep their attention. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the need of like, you know, you're really sick in the scene because I'm thinking of one where he, Theo gets dumped out of the, the car and they say, here's your bus money, or the yes. horrible yeah. guy. Mm -hmm. And um, Patrick, you know, for me, yeah. like, I mean, to a certain extent, I'm familiar with the environment. I know London. But, like, it really allowed me to soak in where he was. There was, mm -hmm. like, some, like, Jamaican, like, rap music going mm -hmm. on. And it was, like, like, I could tell, like, where he was. And mm -hmm. that really didn't, I think he's uh, eliminated the need to, like, focus on, like, okay, this is where we are, mm -hmm. by just doing these long shots, because it does allow you to soak it in. I think the cuts for the audio unconsciously means you have to reposition and repurpose exactly. yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas this just allowed you to be, you know, the, the watcher and just soak it all in. Right, so. and I, I feel that um, the parts that where we could breathe, those were the ones where it was focused on, like, specific people like characters yeah. like like in Jasper's house or you know when they're they're in that school 
mm -hmm. with no children and you know the, the only thing there is like a deer that runs mm -hmm. through it and um it's those are the times to breathe but when it's like stressful it's like mm -hmm. then we're immersed in that yes like them like they focus on the character the the people and then we become the characters in a mm -hmm. sense like we go through this stressful craziness so, so, so. with them mm -hmm. and uh you know i actually want to talk about um the ping pong ball scene like like mm -hmm. start to finish because mm -hmm. i think that's worth talking about i mean i like I'll let you guys chime in when you want. <laughs> I, don't mm -hmm. want to talk mm -hmm. I just want to say that scene is probably one of my favorite scenes in world cinema, period. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's so well done. It's mm. a tour de force. Yeah. And also, another kind of aspect I like about it when you've seen it once, the movie, and you know who Luke is, really, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's interesting to watch his reaction. Um, and mm -hmm. the way he, I feel like he stalls a little bit to like back the car. Yes, yeah. you know he does. Yeah. And now you like you can see that. Um, another scene I just want to quickly talk about is is when they're escaping Bex Hill or they're trying to escape, and I love it because it reminds me of Saving Private Ryan where there's like a shot and somebody gets shot and the blood lands on the camera lens, but they mm. don't wipe it off. Right. And so yeah. I feel like yes. I'm. That's me, like I'm the camera, right. mm -hmm. and I have blood on my face, or I can see, like, and I thought that was so immersive for me, like as mm -hmm. the viewer, like I thought that was brilliant. Right? Mm -hmm. so, oh yeah, that's a absolutely. That is actually my one of my favorite yeah. cinematic shots of, I just of love all that. time. Maybe it was an accident, but they, the fact they decided to keep it in, I mm -hmm. thought it was just like I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think the the shot scene in the the when they're in the car when Julian gets shot, mm -hmm. I I feel like I was shot. Yeah, mm -hmm. like it's just watch like die. Yeah, and yeah. then it gets all yeah. like, it's like it, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, but then when it happens, you just hear the bullet. Yes, and you just it even seemed like it um, the the lens or the the mm -hmm. film thing changed a bit. Like mm -hmm. and it's yeah, and it's mm -hmm. so it's 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 a scene that starts out so happy. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's like the brief the music, part. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. We're, you know, just They're joking about him snoring. They're talking about afternoon sex. And then yeah. just immediately, just everything changes. And then it really changes when she gets shot and mm -hmm. you just... And then Luke it's kills so, the cops. Yeah. It's so you and you and 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 as the viewer, I, I just feel like so helpless watching because mm -hmm. she's just laying there. There's nothing you can do, and mm -hmm. you're just so drawn in um, and Miriam's reaction as well when like yeah. the, they see the cops and they turn around and she kind of like shrieks mm -hmm. and um, it just felt so real like they just played it fantastically mm -hmm. yes um, I love that scene yeah, yeah, it, yeah it that goes, scene. I mean it has a whole set of multiple emotional arcs are all traveling through it like you like you yeah. had mentioned the tones had completely changed it, through it yeah, and I I mean I really like how it does this take on the uh, it does a take on the future in terms of the environment because right. it's so it's it is not a dystopia from nature it yeah. has this sense that nature in its a biological sense maybe it knows what to do and it's going on and it has a pleasant environment but suddenly everything turns well yeah out. I mean you you know there there are all these cows dogs chickens, mm -hmm. yeah. kittens, so obviously it's only the human race that has become infertile. Mm -hmm. All notice? the animals are procreating left yeah. and right. Did you notice, yeah, true, but did you notice the burning of the cows? I did. Yes. Which yes. reminds me of um, the 90s with mad cow disease. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they had yeah. to yeah. all our cows. that was a very English, yeah, yeah. very English phenomenon. Um, I guess another thing I want to just quickly throw in is, we were talking earlier about how London in particular lends itself well to kind of like multinational and immigration like aspects mm -hmm. but I also think like there's a lot of different accents in the movie like the guy with dreads part of the mob was I think he was Liverpudlian or Patrick, definitely yeah. Northern mm -hmm. or Northern Irish or something mm -hmm. and um, I think that really kind of enhanced that, that feeling that like oh this is so multicultural there's people coming in from all over the place and you know Key was definitely African descent um, I felt like she'd moved to England you know, her mm -hmm. accent was a little bit broken. Yeah, I just assumed um, she was like a Caribbean, you know, from one yeah, of the former yeah. colonies mm -hmm. or... And I just I just felt that was a good choice because it lent itself to different accents and kind of dialogues. And I think that that's a really important um, theme of the film about mm -hmm. like human communication because yeah. there, mm -hmm. there's scene after scene where people are trying to communicate across like 
uh, uh, languages you know, when mm -hmm. he's trying to ask Marika about a boat yeah. and mm -hmm. he has to draw it, you know, like, yes. like, like a caveman drawing. Yeah, you know? that was yeah. a wonderful right. In, in the ending scene uh, where they're, they're in a tunnel to try and escape the city, it, the shot is, shows from above and you see like these drawings that are all done on the ceiling of the tunnel that's in this right. kind yeah. of like very faint light very much like it's almost like the first cave drawings yeah it's like you know and maybe I mean, in a way little bottles of liquor and like things that it seemed like they were sneaking because we know they were sneaking things into Bex Hill because mm -hmm. Jasper was yes. selling pot mm -hmm. um, but I liked seeing those little things like that too right yeah, yeah. I, I'm curious what your feelings are about the character of Sid because he's one of the most intriguing characters that comes in you don't really know know what his deal is mm -hmm. and then you know he, he's knocked out at the end but he's integral to helping them complete their task mm -hmm. yet he betrays them well similarly I mean, to to Luke and the fishes in a, in a I weird just sense in it for the money yeah I don't yeah. think he's yeah. yeah I mean I don't think he's a good guy I don't think he's a bad guy I think he's just in it for Sid right and um, it's interesting that the film focuses on him during that that section but, of that film. That's the way I think when 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 you're in a situation like these people are, you know, there's of this hopeless dire us. situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's sad to say, but I think most people would turn into a Sid. I, yeah, I mean, it's agreed. really it's really extreme to have like somebody like Theo who's really trying, like these people that are really trying. Are the minority? And yeah, most most people. Well, he's are an kind opportunist of, by all yeah. means. Yeah. Yeah. I think most yeah. people are kind of just like, well, it's me, myself, and I, since there's no yeah. future. But he definitely <laughs> had like, you know, they definitely added to that with him kind of like messing with him when he first met him and saying, oh. "Call me that again," and like acting like he was mm -hmm. going to him. So he definitely kind of like was a little bit, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of erring on the evil side to just like. <laughs> Wanting the profit. It's, like, it's yeah, super you know. interesting how of all like his bad behavior later, we see later in the movie, he was friends with Jasper. They had a they had a they yeah. had a certain arrangement. In fact, I think which says something about Jasper's character and his ability to kind of like cross like political divides because obviously yeah. Sid is he's you know so right wing, he's sadistic, yeah. right. Um, but you know they, they they share you know an affinity for weed or whatever. I do know a bit about how Michael Caine did that character, and he hmm. Michael Caine himself was friends with John Lennon. Apparently, he based that character on John Lennon. Oh, how nice! Yeah, yeah. yeah and I think he he signifies love mm -hmm. <laughs> and nature and the natural world outside of this chaos in the concrete jungle that is mm -hmm. London. There's yeah. even a John Lennon solo song that's playing in his yeah. house his when brown they're glasses. Like, yeah, and I think yeah. it was beautifully played and I think he portrays that I think mm -hmm. he gives that contrast to you know this war zone that basically is London mm -hmm. and Bex Hill mm -hmm. and and then he shows that there is a life outside of that and mm -hmm. almost invites Theo like hey you can come live with us mm -hmm. and like he has a nice house yet it mm -hmm. has to be hidden and he's strung up with alarms and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. and, so, he, and he uses technology so it's not like tin cans so he's he, yeah he's like actually the most complete person I think like in that, like he's taken the world. He's a realist, and, I think. Yes, but yes. He still ha hangs on to like some hope. And That's he, right. And he's, you know, one of the characters with you know the least hope for. I mean, he's older. Mm -hmm. He's got this damaged wife. Mm -hmm. Um, and yet he he still is so upbeat. I mean, mm -hmm. you can tell it's it's a complicated upbeat. I mean, yeah. He's got, there's yes. a lot more going on there like but that crazy ass me i'm sorry crazy <laughs> music he was playing when yes. he was like oh my ears are ringing and then he's like you won't mind this music then and that was awful that was awful the future of like metal like, <laughs> yes like yes. where we're going <laughs> yeah and i i love the i love the the joke he tells mm -hmm. about the human project yes. because and yeah. i i apologize because i think like this all the time but that joke is also like a microcosm for the film because everyone on the human project is trying to trying to solve the question of infertility and they're having this big dinner and everybody's eating stork mm. yeah which right. which you know the, the the symbol of of you know you're causing your own destruction yes. and looking around saying yes. why on earth is all this destruction yes. happening uh -huh. while you cause it to happen it, exactly yes. right. i think i think he just kind of personifies the british thing of like keep calm and carry on like uh, i yeah. know it kind okay. of sounds a bit like <laughs> cliche but yeah. he is that and and like, you know, 
whenever something goes wrong, it's like there's still humor there. Right. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. it's mm -hmm. okay. Like yeah. he right. still mm -hmm. has some degree of hope and some degree of humor, and he's just carrying on. Mm -hmm. you know? And he has yeah. like the most sense of balance in the movie. Like yeah. he, like he is great because she's very practical and like we'll do what we need to do mm -hmm. to 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 get ahead and survive. Mm -hmm. But he has he has that refuge, and the refuge lets him have a chance to contemplate what the kind of world that he's in, and and he. I think he's the guy, one who's most capable to of like of trying to accept the world as it is. In that speech, like especially in that speech that he's not speech but discussion, he's talking with Miriam about how like what is the moment where like fate and uh, where fate and your and your and choice are are, are, are choice combine. He's mm -hmm. aware and accepts kind of both at uh, both at that level. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you have the choices you have, but then you also accept the ra the things that life. What's at you? Okay, I think it's important two things. Maybe we'll get to the second thing, but the first thing I thought was most important was the end with the when um, everybody in the jail is seeing the baby. Yes. Yeah. And it's yes. just so how much. interesting, like, yeah. it changes the tone. Well, yeah. it, it starts where they hear the baby. Mm -hmm. They hear a baby crying, which is just right. a sound that nobody right. has heard for in 20, 20 years. years. Yeah. yeah. And, but they all knew what it was, yeah. and mm -hmm. just like the shock, like mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like the yeah. sound more than the sight of it is is what. Really I mean, they just all like stop. It was. Stopped. I think it was yeah. just beautiful the way that the military and the police kind of also said handled it, and like the one uh -huh. guy was like, you know, ceasefire, ceasefire, and they let them go through, and then they let them walk through, and a couple of guys were doing like right, sign, right, and, right. and mm -hmm. then the bomb went off again or something happened mm -hmm. and then yeah. it was just back yeah. to the craziness. Yeah. But it was like, it was, I feel like it was just so hopeful that, you know, despite all that going on in the background, w those people like in the movie could still just all agree. Like it was unspoken agreement that like, we will let this baby and the people who right. were protecting mm -hmm. her like right. go through. It's like have a safe package. Yeah. Package. This is more important yeah. than everything else. Yeah. It's yeah. So unspoken agree understanding. That this is more I mean, and yet, yeah. ironically, they, they can only hold off for a few minutes. Like, I think that yeah. scene is the most, um, it's the greatest statement upon human spirituality that's mm. ever been put yeah. in a movie. Yeah. That, in the way that it's shown and it's shot, the way you have, like, um, Theo and Key carrying the baby away with the soldiers standing right. still, like, mm -hmm. and, and just realizing that moment and then having a, the, a missile come in. Who fired it? Why did they fire it? Mm -hmm. You don't know. And it's important for you to, as an audience to know right. that you don't know. It's not, you're not going to know what causes the conflict to give again. It is the greatest thing, I think, the uh, absolute truthful statement about mm -hmm. what we as humans would do in the presence of an unethical miracle right. and what yeah. we would do two minutes after the miracle has happened. I'm glad they showed the tomorrow boat at the end. Right. If they hadn't have even done that couple of second shot right. it would have just been very hopeless <laughs> even if it even if it doesn't so, mean necessarily that the human all project is fine. Yeah. That, all that there is this human project that is making advances just to know that the boat exists yeah there's just it's just is enough that was a question does it exist right are we yeah. even gonna find it's it nice to yeah. know there's a tomorrow right it's nice to yeah, know and then, yeah and then we look at the transformation of theo's character when he's in the boat at the yeah. end it's just like He's just so at peace. Like mm -hmm. suddenly the stress level is down. He did what he set out to do. Right. He actually mm -hmm. succeeded. Right. And then that part where he's thing. doing yes. this with the baby, it's mm -hmm. just like he could share that with her. Like exactly. pass along yes. right before mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. he dies. He knew mm -hmm. he was gonna die. Um, I think he protects her like yeah. throughout the film. He he doesn't when Jasper gets shot and right. she says, like, Jasper, and he's like, oh, she's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. yeah. And then at the end, she's like, oh, my God, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. So he definitely shields her. And I think that it's beautiful when she says, I'm going to call it her Dylan. Yeah. And then he kind of yes. passes away with a <laughs> smile on his face. So it kind of wraps it. Yeah. Well, Dylan's, a, yeah, it's a wonderful, right. It's a wonderful choice because it ties in for, like, how she was the young Dylan's age at the time. Like, his circle is complete. He's found his yeah. purpose. He's Julian's gone. Jasper's gone. I feel like it's his circle right. is complete. Yes. Uh -huh. you know. And and yeah. the expressions on his face when he's when he's 
cradling this, the phantom infant are just priceless because just he, showing her what to do yes she has no idea yes you know? yeah jeff did you have anything you wanted to say about this yeah um uh, i i because i tend to i guess um fight against uh uh the the, the dark cynicism of him dying i want to believe that they give him an operation on the tomorrow and he and Key survive and <laughs> live happily ever after. But I think it, I, I think mm -hmm. he, he's gone at the end and I think he, he needs to be gone at the end for the story to yeah. and it's, come complete. And it's kind of coming back to this whole thing about passing on like immortality through children. Yeah. Like he died but it's okay because something is living on. Yes. So I'm going to do what we did last time. Let's just say one word that first comes to your head with the film. Um, I don't know if you saw that, Kate, but pretty pretty much what we do is just say the first word that comes in our head with this movie, and I would birth. Hope. Miracular. Despair. What do you think? I think multiculturalism. Good. Yeah. All right, well, that's it then. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks for watching. For watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs>